Um, I'd have to say probably the best reward challenge I ever won was in Australia. We did a boomerang toss. And we actually learned how to throw boomerangs from a local Aborigine, which was way beyond cool. Um, and I won the challenge. And I got this amazing meal. And I remember I took Amber with me. And at this point, it was just past the merge. And we hadn't eaten real food, not once, up to this point. And Amber and I ate every single thing that was put in front of us. And I was so sick all night long running into the woods, um, which is very unpleasant. <laughs> But oh my gosh, I just remember how good that food was. And just getting away from the game for a little while was really nice too. The weather in Samoa helped my game. It rained so much that I knew that the weak people I played with were gonna get weak, weaker, because they couldn't take it. They, they couldn't take it. And it's plain as day, you could watch it and see. So in my mind, I wanted it to keep raining. The immunity out is very important. The immunity out is a blessing and a curse at times. But as everybody knows, I'm the guy who had two of them and didn't do what I was supposed to and kind of got blindsided and taken out of the game. What happened on, with me and the two immunity out is that I rolled the dice a little bit too many times. I had a, a warning or a sense that I should have played them, I just didn't. You know, it was, it was just one, my day, you know. I had a rough day that day. I wasn't in the, my head wasn't in the game. And whenever your head's not in the game, that's when it usually comes up to bite you. And they got me, you know. I'm the guy who left with two immunity autos. In Cook Islands, I, uh, you know, I was acting in anger because I was mad that Jonathan had just betrayed us. And I was chopping a coconut and um, pretending it was his head because I was really cool, you know and really mature, so I was <laughs> chopping the coconut and pretending it's Jonathan, and in my anger and rage, I chopped my thumb instead, which was in the way, and I sliced like half of the tip of my thumb off and just started shrieking. I was, because you know, I didn't realize really what had happened. I knew I'd cut something, but the pain hadn't really set in at that point. It was just shock. And I looked at my thumb and it was like a pop-up book. Like part of my thumb was just popping up off of it. And I was like, oh my God, as soon as I saw it, then it started hurting. And like, you know, the, the like pumping pain, it was awful. I was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? So the doctor came to the island and stitched me up on the island, lays out a tarp. My thumb's like crusted with dirt. It's disgusting. It hasn't been cleaned at all. He starts stitching it up with the dirt in it and stuff. And I'm like, this can't be good. Like this is, I don't think this is good at all. Like he, he put a shot of um, like numbing stuff in it and then started stitching it. I'd never had stitches before in my life. So this is my first time having stitches. I'm laying on a tarp in the middle of the island with like blood gushing out and dirt crusting onto my thumb and I just, I was like, this, this is not, I don't think this is good at all. And then I was, and then he told me not to get it wet. He was like, whatever you do, don't get it wet. I'm like, oh great, because I'm not living on an island where it rains all the time and I have to swim in the ocean to get food and do water challenges. Brilliant, I'll try not to get my thumb wet. Thanks, doc. <laughs> the girls are rough and hard to play with because they're more sociable, which is my worst thing of the game, you know? I'm working, I'm trying to make sure everything's squared away, I'm worried about challenges. I never really paid attention to what's going on, why they're always whispering and what they're doing. They're winning the game is what they're doing. They're figuring stuff out, they're forming alliance, other alliances to strengthen their position in the game. I grew up feeling like I was never good at anything. I would tell my kids that I'm going to someday show this world who I am. But they would look at me and say, how the heck, you know, you, you work in inner city Indianapolis with a bunch of juvenile delinquents. Nobody cares about us. And then Survivor came out. And I showed my kids right there, right there on TV, that silly game show right there. I'm going to get on there. I'm going to win the darn thing. I'm going to show I'm good at something. I love adventure camping. I love the idea of going out. Being able to, anything that you catch, you can eat. Anything you gather, you can have. Making your own food, your own shelter, your own way. That's what I've lived all my life.
and being able to show my kids in my mentoring program that if you set your goals even outrageously high, maybe you will attain. I mean, I got on Survivor, I showed the world who I was, I won a million bucks for losing the game, and you know, I get fan mail from around the world now who know who I am. It's kind of cool. My most memorable immunity challenge just flashed in my head, so I have to tell you this one, is the one that I won in Micronesia where I held my arm over my head for six and a half hours, standing on a little circle platform, and I was going up against Jason, and he finally, finally, I, I thought that challenge would never end because that kid could just hold on for the rest of his life, and I was dying, like literally dying. Like, panicking inside, you know, on the outside it was super cool, but it was really hard. And then finally he stepped off for food to feed the tribe to redeem himself. Yes. That was um, oh. one oh of the God. most, I guess, changing moments of my life because I realized at that point that I could endure any kind of pain, any kind of discomfort. If my mind was focused, then I could do anything. I was praying to God. I was like, please, God, just let him let go. Like, let this challenge be over. I was just talking to myself the whole time. I was talking to, like, my grandma passed away a few years ago, so I was, like, talking to my grandma. I was like, give me strength. Help me get through this. I was um, just watching people, and I was, like, looking at anything that would distract me, like a butterfly would fly by. I'm like, oh, but I couldn't get too distracted because if I moved my arm, the whole bucket of water would have dumped on my head. So I had to be really, um, really still. So I was just kind of drawing up from strength on the inside. It was tough. Oh my God. Um, you know, I hear people say, oh, I wanna go on that show so I can lose weight. There has to be an easier way, you know, from the starvation to the dehydration, uh, just the physical stress it's amazing that people like me <laughs> come out of it alive. And I, no pun intended, I'm a registered nurse. So when I say come out of it alive, it is so abnormal. It's not, this is not for the normal person. This is not what your body should do on a regular basis. The girls are rough and hard to play with because they're more sociable, which is my worst thing of the game. You know, I'm working, I'm trying to make sure everything's squared away, I'm worried about challenges. I never really paid attention to what's going on, why they're always whispering and what they're doing. I was worried about mosquitoes when I first heard I was going to Samoa, but it was so cold at night. And I was like, how is it so cold? It was so cold, mosquitoes didn't come out at night. Look, you know, there's this game of Survivor and people know me in the game of Survivor. Very few people get to know me outside of the game. It's just life. Ethan and Jenna are two of the most wonderful people I've ever met in my entire life. They've visited me in prison. They've been incredibly supportive. And I am just as heart-wrenchingly uh, uh, determined to support him in this in any way that I could, his battle against cancer. Uh, I think he's, he's just an incredible man. The heck with this silly game. You know, it's a game. It's a wonderful game. He did great. He won. But he's, he's in the fight of his life. I love the man. I absolutely love him. I love Jenna. And those people are really, really going through it right now. You know, he'll get through it. He's, uh, he's doing really well right now. And, uh, and I'm behind him. I love him. Playing the game of Survivor has broadened my horizons tremendously. It's opened my eyes to endless possibilities. I mean, not that I was limited before, but I was a little, I don't know, afraid to venture out and do and try things. But after doing Survivor, what can you be afraid of? You know, I've been on islands at night <laughs> with bugs, you know, dark, scary, no food, no water. I'm not afraid of a lot now. It makes you, it made me stronger. It made me believe in myself more than I did previously. I think Australia was especially difficult because of 
the amount of variables and the elements that just kept kicking us. You know, we had a huge brush fire move through our camp early in the game, only to then be followed up by a, by a flood that washed our entire camp away. All of our belongings, including our ration of rice. And the only way we were gonna get any more was to give up something that we had. And, and one was our tarps that we used to shelter, and the other was my personal luxury item. But it was a no-brainer when Probes came into camp and he said, look, I'll give you some more rice, but it's gonna cost you. We got a barter. I want your shelter and I want that flag. You know, what am I gonna say, no? You know, I have six other people that, are, that, that, are, that need a roof over their head. And the reality is, there again, that's part of the social aspect of this game. Winning some favor from them by me kind of showing them, hey, I'm willing to give up my luxury items so we can keep going in this game. So there was some strategy in that. Well, I've always said that being cold and wet is my least favorite situation or circumstance imaginable. And being cold and wet is kind of the norm on Survivor, especially in the days where it, you know, it'll rain for like two, three days at a time and it just never lets up. It, it almost it puts you in a state of uh, insanity at some point because you can't go out of your shelter, but usually the shelters are not that great anyway, so you're gonna get wet regardless. It's just something that you have to learn to deal with. Um, I've, over the years, I, I've gotten to the point now where I've realized that the way to get through those moments is to just kind of go inside your head and find a happy place where you're warm and comfortable and surrounded by people who love you and trying to think about the fact that you're in the exact extreme opposite of that scenario. It's not easy. It takes a very strong person to get through those conditions. Palau sleeping conditions were bad because we were sleeping on bamboo and we were trying to protect from the rain. But Guatemala, they were really horrible because it was just so hot and muggy and then the bugs were constantly on you. And then you had the poisonous caterpillars with the spikes that you'd wake up. I mean, one time I woke up and there was one sitting right here and I just, you know, I was waking up and I was like, oh, I was like touching my shirt and there it was. And you, you can't touch it because once it stings you, it injects poison, and then you're really in trouble for a couple hours. So you're trying to get these bugs off, and you're shaking your <laughs> shirt, and it's, it's, it's hard to sleep out there, but at the same time, you're so exhausted that you literally just pass out. You might wake up all night long, but you, at one point, you're like delirious, and you pass out because you're that exhausted from the day. We went into the fan favorite twice, you know. I have no idea, I mean, it was, it's like a blessing, the fact that people liked me, you know, they got where I was coming from. They saw me as a good person. They actually saw me as a good person twice, you know, it was a great thing. It's a great honor.